Okay, class. Next, the field appraisal and assessment sheet for our machinery. So first, it is also included in our transaction code, which is require the property to be assessed or to be reassessed. And also the, the PIN, indicate the assessment real property number, and the property index number. And also in the owner, the address, the team, the telephone number. So you need to indicate the name of the owner of the machinery to complete the mailing address. And also the taxpayer's identification number and his or her telephone number. And also the administrator. You should include the, the name, the complete address, the team, as well as the telephone number. And as well, it should be uh, indicated the property location. So you should enter the number and the street name of the property, the name, and the index number of the barangay or district, and the name of the municipality and province or city where it is uh, installed. We should also indicate the name of the land and also the building owner along with the corresponding pin. And mark taxable gold box with an X if the property is taxable. Okay, that is your, uh, pursuant to the provision of the existing laws. And if it is exempt, mark X if the property is exempt from payment of the real property tax. Pursuant to the section 234 of the local government code of 19 of 1991, as provided under the uh, or as provided under the other laws and also the effectivity of assessment and reassessment indicate the year of the effectivity of the assessment or reassessment so the appraised or assessed by and also the recommending approval so we should uh, uh, the person who authorize to conduct the appraisal and assessment, as well as the assessor who is authorized to recommend the assessment approval, must sign over the preprinted name in the space provided. And also for the approving officer, the city assessor, municipal assessor, or provincial assessors as applicable, must sign over the printed name. The provincial assessor, on the other hand, has the authority to delegate the assessment approval authority to the municipal assessor under his jurisdiction and indicate any of the costs or causes that brought about the assessment or reassessment of the real property in the space provided and also such as the reason for the uh, assessment or reassessment of the subject property as general revision of assessments, implementation of the RPTA project, or any other legal cause. Okay, next, let's talk about the tax declaration of the real property. So here we have a first, no? First in the list is the title of the form, which is the tax declaration. And then the purpose of the form is to establish a, a permanent assessment record and provide that property owner with the, the information relative to the assessment of his or her property. And then the assessor uh, responsible in accomplishing the form. So the, uh, it is either the provincial assessor that can uh, delegate the, the uh, the assessment to the municipal assessor and also the city assessor or the metro uh, or the municipal assessor within the metro manila area so under the tax declaration of the real property we have the numbers or number of copies that we should prepare okay so for the recipient or office where it should be filed 
For example, the assessor's office of the municipality in the Metro Manila area, the type of copy should be original. You need to submit the original with number of two copies. For the property owner, it should be only duplicate. So, city assessor's office and the property owner, they must submit two copies. Should be and the one copy should be submitted to the city assessor's office that is original, and the duplicate one is for the property owner. Uh, for our provincial assessor's office, should submit an original with three copies, and also for your property owner, the copy should only be duplicate, and assessor's office. Uh, of the municipalities outside Metro Manila, uh, this is what they call the uh, triplicate. Okay, so numbering system use the 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 numbers that is in the R ARP number shall follow the numbering system prescribed in the manual that we're using. Okay, so preparing the tax declaration of the real property. So a tax declaration shall be prepared for every real for every real property unit. When? First, a general revision of assessments is conducted. And then, if a property is newly discovered or is declared for the first time. And also, if there is a change in an area. And also, a change for the classification of the properties. And also, change of the ownership. And it, uh, there is an evident uh, change of physical appearance and, uh, and structure of the property and also the change in location. This one is applicable only to our machinery. Okay, next. Next topic is the manner of filing. So the tax declaration shall be filed by barangay following the sequence of the uh, tax declaration number and the instruction in the manner of accomplishing the tax declaration all information to be entered in the tax de declaration form shall be um, extracted from the corresponding uh, FAAS as what we discussed earlier so the tax declaration number indicates that the uh, TD number which is also the FAAS number. The property identification number indicate PIN assigned to the subject property. And also the owner indicate the name of the property owner in the, in the same manner as in the FAAS, his or her mailing address, the telephone number, and also the taxpayer's identification number. And the administrator, who is the beneficial user, indicate the name of the administrator beneficial user, if any, as well as the mailing address, the telephone number, and the taxpayer's identification number. And then the instruction in the manner of accomplishing the tax declaration. So all of the information to be entered in the tax declaration form shall be extracted for, from the corresponding address. Okay. Then the location of the property, indicate the building number, if any, the, the name of the street, the name, and also the indicate the, part, the, the title number, the survey plan, lot number, and lot number. And also the boundaries, indicate the appropriate description of lots, bounding to subject property as appearing to or appearing in the, our FAAS. Next is the instruction or in the manner of accomplishing the tax declaration. So all information that was been entered in the tax declaration form shall be extracted from the corresponding yes, FAAS. And what is the kind of the property? should place an X in the appropriate box for the kind of real property and, the, and also indicate the corresponding information that is being required for the kind of property being assessed. The classification indicate the classification of the property as appearing in the FAAS and also the area 
should indicate the area of the parcel of land or building. How does the how wide is the property? In the case maybe and as appearing in the FAAS. And also indicate the market value arrived at for the property as shown in the FAAS. Then let's talk about the tax map control or the TMCR. So the tax map control, what is the purpose of this? Okay, first, this is a basic document in controlling the PIN in each section map. And also uh, used as a reference in real property appraisal and assessment. So, the offices who are responsible in preparing and maintaining the, the tax map control, the TMCR, are the following. The city assessor's office, the assessor's office in municipalities, if within the Metro Manila area, as well as the provincial assessor's office. But such responsibility may all may be delegated to the municipal assessor via a daily issued office order. And however, each office of the provincial assessor and municipal assessor concerned must keep a copy of the TMCRs and the corresponding tax maps. So what the numbers or the number of copies to be prepared. So first, no, you need to have a one original copy and one print copy of the TMCR. This should be prepared for the municipalities of Metro Manila and also the cities. So in the case of the municipalities who are located outside the Metro Manila area, the original copy as well as the two print copies must be prepared. One for the Provincial Assessor's Office and another for the Municipal Assessor's Office. The original copy and map master shall remain with the Provincial Assessor's Office unless the municipality fully funded the tax mapping project, in which case the Municipal Assessor's Office shall retain both the original and the print copy of both the TMCR and the map master. And one original copy and also one printed copy should be prepared in municipalities. Okay. So the frequency, what is the frequency of this? Uh, preparing for the tax map uh, control code. So this one must be prepared separately for each section map, as well as the newly created section maps. Extra sheets for listing may be permitted as needed. And for the manner or for the manner of filing, the TMCR shall be filed with the corresponding tax maps by Barangay. The original copy of the TMCR shall be uh, filed with uh, original tax map and kept in the office of the city assessor, in the municipal assessor in municipalities within Metro Manila area, and also for the office of the provincial assessor. So the following are the instructions of the manner of preparing the tax map control role, okay? So first, the province or the city should indicate the name of what province or city and followed by the corresponding index number enclosed in parentheses. Next, the municipality or the district. So it should be state the name of what municipality or the city followed by the index number and close also in parentheses. And also next is the barangay and also the second section. We should state what is the complete address of the barangay and index number. In the section index number, the assessor slot number. This one indicate the assessor's lot number, which is the number assigned to individual lots, and also the survey lot number. This one indicates the survey number such as CAD 775 or PSD 10011, and 
or lot number or block number uh, can be indicated. <clears throat> so, next, land, the title, number, should state if it is OCT, TCT, or CLOA number for the initial entry. So, if there is a change in the title number, simply indicate the new TCT number. And also, and also the area, indicate the, the area of hectares for agricultural land, mineral or timber lands. And in square meters for our residential, commercial, or industrial lands. So, for the class or the code, you need to state the classification. If R for residential, A for agricultural, and for other classification of property, you must indicate the appropriate code for that specific land. And also the name of the owner, you need to indicate the complete name, the short name first, and followed by the given name. And then the middle name initial for the initial entry. And also in case of change of ownership, enter the name of the new owner. And also the uh, ARP number indicate the assigned assessment of real property number of the property and the tax declaration number which is in the ARPN. Building structure indicate the number of building uh, buildings or structures that are erected on the land. And also machinery. You may mark X if the machinery has been installed in the building or indicate the kind of improvement other than building or machinery found on the property. And also, you must include your remarks, state any explanatory remarks regarding the property that led to the subsequent assessment or reassessment for a subdivision, duplication of assessment, or transaction code may be used such as SD for subdivision. So, that's the end class of our lesson. So for your further reading, I may uh, refer you to the Manual on Real Property Appraisal and Assessment Operations by the Department of Finance. So this could aid you for your further readings and for additional information. So that's the end class of my lecture. And thank you very much. I hope you've learned something in relation to this topic that you can be able to apply to your professional work. And for those who are still in the process of reviewing or uh, new to the industry, may my lesson will be able to add to your, uh, give you additional knowledge and information. Okay, so I'll see you again class on my next lesson. Thank you and have a good day.